have to find ways so he's not one on one. They might have to get rid of the ball quicker. They might not be able to sit in the pocket and throw those deep developing routes that give you problems. So I think it's more so what are they going to do than what do we have to do. But certainly we have to do a good job in the scheme of putting him in the best position to succeed. And what's his demeanor been like the last couple of weeks? The, the fact that he wasn't going through all the, the game reps and everything like that. Right? He's, been, he's been great. Um, he's came to work every day. Uh, he's met. I saw him watching film late last night. You know, he's practice. He, he just he hasn't changed who he is. I know it was a tough time, and I, I think it will make him stronger in the end. Third row, uh, middle. Dan from uh, Leavenworth. Chef, you guys have done a really good job of eliminating big plays this year. This is a Penn State offense that's had a lot of big plays. What are the things that you have to reinforce for your team this week to make sure that's not something that recurs this week? Yeah, it's uh, play the scheme. Um, Rely on your fundamentals and your technique and do your job. And I know that sounds cliche, but that's the truth. Don't do anything different. Do what you've been coached to do. Do what you've been doing. Play the right leverage. Get off blocks. Tackle. Um, run to the football. And I, I'm not hiding anything from you. That's the truth. What's got us to this point is we're fundamentally sound. Our guys play really hard, and they're playing with really good technique and fundamentals. Um, so don't, don't try to create anything. Don't, don't change who you are because of who they are. Decision to put uh, Kate Stover at defensive end this past week. Just wondering what went into that decision, and do you, is that kind of something you're just experimenting with, or do you kind of see that as his future at all? Yeah, we wanted to experiment with him. We've been doing it for a little bit in practice. He's been doing that a little bit on the scout team. Um, so we kind of just are trying to figure out exactly what he can do, uh, where he's best suited. So I, I think we'll continue to work through that and see what the best spot is for him. But he's very talented. He's got a lot of versatility. He's strong. He can run. Uh, so we're trying to find the best place for him right now. Yes. What did you see, and um, did you design your defense based upon that, or did you design your defense based upon what Ryan wanted? Well, we, we saw really good players. I saw really talented players um, at all three levels. And then I think we what we tried to do is we tried to take that skill set and that talent and put them in the best position. So I think it was a combination of stuff Coach Madison's done, stuff that I've done, stuff that Coach Johnson have done. Uh, we kind of pieced it all together to find out you know, what does this group do really well? And how can we maximize that ability? And that's, that's kind of how we put the scheme together. So you've given up essentially a third as many points and about I mean, your yardage is a decrease of 80%. If people ask you to explain how, because it's the same guy, it's not like you have impact freshmen. Well, again, I, I, I watched the personnel last year, but I don't, I don't want to draw any comparisons to that. So how have we done it this year? I think, one, we've got the guys to buy in. I think our staff has done a really, really good job teaching the scheme, but more importantly than anything else there is in football, guys, is fundamentals and technique. And I say that because I think that's lost today in football. And I've said this before. People get, I'm going to draw this blitz up and this coverage up, and I'm going to do this, this, and this. And we can all do that. But at the end of the day, what can you really execute? And if you have to spend all your time doing all of that, then how do you teach getting off of blocks? How do you teach leverage? How do you teach the proper steps? How do you teach tackling? How do you teach all the little things that are so much more important than scheme? So that's what we've done. And people might look at us on tape and say, ah, they, don't, they don't do too much. But we do. But I believe that we play with great fundamentals. And I would say right now we're one of the best tackling teams in football. And that was more important to us than any, wow, that's a great blitz, or wow, that coverage is so exotic. That's to us, that, that was not the important thing. So I think we put our priorities in the right place with really good talent that was recruited here, and the players that bought in and worked. And I think that is why we are where we are right now. So if you had to give it a, a percentage accounting for the improvement or for your performance this year, what percentage would you say is scheme change? What percentage is buy-in? What percentage is technique and all those other instructions? I think it's, it's hard to put a percentage on that. I'd put the biggest percentage on the players buying in. And then on them working the fundamentals and the technique, and the coach is doing a great job of, of getting them ready to do that. Um, but I'd give most of the credit to the players. And again, you also had a year more experience. You have a lot of guys that got a lot of playing time last year that this is year two for them. So you know, if you do want to make comparisons or look back, a lot of these guys played last year, learned from it, got their scars, got better, and now they are playing again, which hopefully the more games you play, the more tough times you have, the better you will get. So I give the credit to the players on the team. Improvement in sports is related somewhat to confidence. How oh, much, no doubt. How much of the buy-in 
first had to be you getting them to believe they were better than the performance a year ago. That's huge. I mean, that's everything. And you see it day by day. If a guy plays well the way he comes out and practices the next day, he practices better. In life, anything is confidence. I mean, you make a great point. So when I say that, the guys bought in. They did. They bought into what we were teaching and what they had to do. But I also think they developed a confidence in themselves. And I think if you watch us, or at least I hope if you guys watch us, you see a confident group because you have to play this game confident, whether you're a DB turning and looking for the ball or you're a defensive end lining up against the tackle. That's everything, which is why I give the credit to the players. Well, I guess I guess they, I guess we figured that part out too. I still give the credit to the players. Uh, couple guys, time for a couple more. Front row right, Tim. Front row right. Yeah, uh, Jeff talked about not giving up big plays. How much of a reality check was it for your defense to give up that gash play off left tackle Saturday yeah. after the bubble punt? And you know, you know what I mean. Do you in any season do you need a reinforcement moment where you, if you don't take care of business, things can happen? Yeah, I think that's huge. And if you look back to that play. There were three or four players on the team at all different levels that should have stopped that play. And it's just a reminder, if you don't do your job every single play and you're not precise on every single play, that that can happen. And we have to eliminate that. And that cannot happen, and hopefully it won't happen. And uh, the other thing, with Chase coming back, it, do you think he's the kind of player that has to be, I don't know, toned down a little bit? Because I'm sure he's missed two games. Uh, He's excited about being back. If you understand my yeah, no, you know, I talk about play the scheme and not just. I mean, how, how will y'all handle that? I guess going into the game of making sure he's not over revved. That's a good question, and I'm sure Coach Johnson will talk to him a lot about that. I just think you got to remind him to go out and do your job and remember how you got here. And I think he will be excited, and I hope he is excited, and I hope he is a little ramped up on that first pass rush, and I hope he gets off the ball just a little bit faster than he usually does because that would be really fast. Um, but I think Coach Johnson will do a great job with him. And hopefully, the first time he gets off the ball, it looks just like it has. Uh, second row left, Ari from The Athletic. Jeff, it's senior day, right? And there's going to be a lot of talk about what some of the seniors, like Damon and you know, guys in, in your room, have brought to this program. But do you like have like an extra hour of time with Jeff this week, too, to kind of say goodbye? And <laughs> how Why is it? Jeff leaving? I would be shocked if he didn't. <laughs> No, I, I, this week, guys, every minute that we've had so far is going to prepare for Penn State. So hopefully I'm spending an extra hour with all of them going over the film because this is a really good football team. Um, this is the best football team that we've played thus far. So everything is about this game, and they will be in there working on that. I was just messing around a little bit, but I was just wondering if you could take me through just your progression with him. Um, with who? With, with Jeff, and just from the beginning, what you've seen in terms of his development as a, a, a lockdown corner, his physical development maybe. Yeah. I know it's been kind of a short time in, in, the, cup, in the scope of an entire career, but how have you seen him? I think the best thing I could say about Jeff, and this is the truth, is he gets better every single week. He does stuff at practice every single day that he looks better at. He just absorbs everything, and that's fundamentals, technique, that's – scheme that's reading routes it's understanding zone concepts it's understanding leverage and man it's understanding stacks and bunches he's always in my office he's always texting me questions he's the, the mental aspect of his game has grown so much the physical aspect has grown so much i don't even think that i i think who we see now who we see two games from now will be a totally different player and that's the fun thing about jeff right now the way he practices and the way he prepares he's so much fun to coach and again that's a credit to him and he is definitely a more confident player Jeff, you talked about um, what a team will have to do to prepare for Chase, right? Did you see anything in the last two games that you noticed oh, teams weren't maybe doing some things that they would have had to do? Like, what Did you see a difference on film that, oh, I can tell Chase is not there? Well, yeah, I think you saw some deeper developing routes. I think you saw the back getting out a little bit more, the tight end getting out a little bit more. But if you look, the first team before Rutgers that tried that, we had seven sacks. So the guys stepped up. And they probably should have kept the tight end in the back end. Um, so you saw a little bit of, OK, maybe we don't have to do this. But then you saw what's coming. Because our young D-line, they're coming. And then hopefully at next year at this point, one of those guys is being talked about the same way that Chase is being talked about. So you got to give a lot of credit to those young guys because they stepped up in practice, which was awesome. I mean, if you guys could have seen them practice when he was gone, I mean, 
it was impressive. And they all stepped up. And that's a credit to Coach Johnson and a credit to those young guys because they did a really good job when he was gone. I mean, what do we have? Eight, nine sacks in two games? That's pretty impressive. And you talked uh, about that this will be the best group of receivers that you guys have faced. With the talent you guys have at corner, just, you know, they've played very well. You haven't been necessarily super tested in the passing game, you know, every week just with the opponent. Just what's it been like with that group, with that room that you know they're good, they know they're good, they're maybe not being pushed to the limit every week. Here comes a big game. What's it been like coaching them this year in that situation? Well, you coach them hard. You coach them on every step. You coach them on every ball that's caught on them in practice. Because if you ask those guys, it's whether it's a walkthrough, whether it's a live rep, whether we're just jogging around, it's not OK to get a ball caught on you. And that's the mentality that they have to have. Because if they start becoming OK with the ball getting caught on them and walk through, then eventually it will be OK if they get it caught on them in a real game. So you just got to stay on them and coach them hard. And if their hands aren't in the right place, you got to get on them. And if their eyes aren't in the right place, you got to get on them. So again, I've said it's all about the process. It's not about the result. Jeff's locking a guy down over there. He doesn't get the ball thrown to him. That doesn't mean he graded out well. How was his first step? Where were his eyes? Did he really win on the route? Was he in the right position? Did he get his eyes back? So you just stay on them and you coach them hard on the process. So hopefully when the time comes, they're ready to make the plays. Coach, thank you very Thanks, much. guys.